People ask all the time, is game manipulative? And in fact, one of the biggest pieces of advice given in game is just be yourself. Now, while in general, I think just be yourself is bad advice for most people it's actually given to, I did have a student recently who had a policy of radical honesty that worked incredibly, ridiculously well and was even eye-opening for me. So I wanna to talk to you briefly about what he did, why it worked, when you should be radically honest in game and when that will actually fail miserably. So let's talk about that right now. So what was the deal with this radically honest student who got amazing results and opened my eyes? Well, I wanna start off with an anecdote. At the end of the night, we were outside the bar with two girls. Um, I'd been talking to my girl for a while and she really liked me. He had been talking to his girl for far less long and she barely knew him. And they were about to get in their car and leave. So in order to persuade them to stay and continue the night, I decided to go ahead and make out with my girl. This isn't something I often do on the way to a poll, but I did it in this case because I thought that it might just motivate her, it might just convince her to stay. Um, and so he and his girl were sitting in this awkward position of looking at this couple make out and wondering what do we do now? And a lot of guys would change the subject or look away or whatever, right? What he did, he's like, should we do that too? And to be clear, he was nowhere near where this girl should have made out with him. They did not have that kind of connection. He was not that far in, but she's like, yeah, sure. And they just made out. And then we eventually ended up getting in the car with them, getting to the next venue, and we went farther in the set by miles and miles, literally, than we would have had he not done that. So that worked dramatically well, and it was very surprising. It's not what most guys would have done. Second example. This guy's opener in general was basically, hey, can I meet you? That's it, right? Hey, can I meet you? Which is a fine opener in a lot of cases, but he was using it across the board. He was using it in sets with other guys present. So he'd walk up to two guys and two girls who are clearly together, walk up to one of the girls, just be like, hi, can I meet you? Right? Which should not work in that case. It's too direct, right? It's a, literally a rude affront to the guy but it actually worked the vast majority of times. And in some cases, the guy was completely excluded almost from moment one as soon as the girl gave him attention. Now, why did this work? Well, it worked because number one, there's a little bit of good game to it. You are going after what you want, which is positive. You are showing a lot of confidence. In the case of the AMOG set, you're showing a lot of balls, right? And in the case of the makeout situation, you are leaving a lot of tension in maybe an uncalibrated way, but weirdly kind of in a calibrated way too. So there's some good at game elements. But the other reason why this worked, I think, was down to who this guy was. See, this guy was like a recovering addict, right? He had been through some real shit in his life. He had been through it and come out the other side, and he just didn't want to deal with any more nonsense. So he was kind of like, look, I'm going to be me, and if you like that, great. If you don't like that, great. My life is good right now. I've been through far worse stuff than you rejecting me, and I just really don't care. And really, honestly, I just don't want situations that waste my time. So that attitude of being genuinely uncaring about the outcome and genuinely going after what he wanted in a very pure way and just wanting to be honest came through. So his radical honesty worked because it was real and genuine and came from that place. If you tried to fake radical honesty, I don't think it would work nearly as well. So let's talk about some of the radically honest things this student did that didn't work quite so well. One that really stands out for me is he was talking to one girl who really, really liked him, tons of attraction, but she had a boyfriend and she mentioned it in the interaction. So the right thing for him to do would probably be like, oh, it's just a coffee, not a big deal, nothing has to come of it, and just let her go with him without cheating by going with him, let there be plausible deniability, and she probably would have gone at least on an instant date, if not a lot further. What he did instead was he explained to her that probabilistically most relationships fail, therefore it's likely that she won't even be with that boyfriend at some point in the future, and since they like each other, they may as well just go have the drink right now. And while that's not a 0% chance of working, it's very low probability because you've taken away the girl's plausible deniability. You've made it cheating by even going with you. You've, been, you've become a direct and imminent threat to the boyfriend. And so it's hard for her to justify that with any kind of self-image of honesty, loyalty, not cheating, etc. So instead, he ended up not even getting a number, whereas he probably could have gotten for sure a number, probably an instant date, or maybe even more right then and there. So that wasn't very smart. Um, another thing he did that's probably a bigger overall error because it happens more often was whenever the girl was giving a little bit of negativity in the interaction. Let's say you're having an interaction, it's going mostly good, but there's a little bit of hesitancy, a little bit of negativity. What you should usually do is either ignore it or reframe it as positive or neutral if you mention it or if you deal with it. But what he did is he said, yeah, you seem like you're kind of uncomfortable now, what's up? Or you seem like you're kind of uncomfortable now, I'm sorry if I'm bothering you, etc. And so what he did there is he took a small intangible negative 
and made it a big tangible negative, which actually in most cases meant the interaction had to end. And in most cases, the interaction was more good than bad, right? It was not like it was a bad interaction. It was a good interaction with a little bit of bad, but because he was being honest about that perception and bringing it to the surface, it wasn't very useful. Even more generally than this, aside from those which you could attribute those blunders to maybe missing other game principles or whatever, the other big issue that he had though was there just wasn't enough tension in his sets. He was attractive, girls liked him, um, he was able to get numbers, he was able to get dates, he was able to get all that kind of stuff, but the amount of tension that he had, the amount of sexual tension, was less than it should have been, and he had a really hard time getting girls to chase because he was being so honest and so upfront, he was losing the mystery. And so, in essence, number one, his game wasn't working as well, but number two, he was depriving the girls of an experience. He wasn't making it as good for them, as thrilling for him, for them, sorry, or as amazing for them as it could have been if he had let there be some tension and some mystery. So that's a global issue with it. So those are some anecdotes about a student, but let's talk more generally. Why is radical honesty good? Why is it bad? And how can you apply this to your specific situation and to your game? So clearly there are times when radical honesty can be dramatically effective in game, and clearly there are times when it's a terrible, terrible idea. But how can you tell the difference between the two? Well, I can't go into every particular scenario, but here are some general guidelines. Guideline number one. If your radical honesty is positive, it's more likely to work than if it is negative. So if it is socially acceptable, if it is about having fun, if it is about connection, it's a lot more likely to work than if it's about not having fun, if it's about negativity, if it's about complaining, anything like that. Also, if it's about you having a positive view of yourself, it's likely to work. If it's about you being insecure or low value, it's unlikely to work. Which brings me to point number two that radical honesty is likely to work when it's actually congruent with other principles of good game, it's likely to not work when it violates other principles of good game. So for example, if your radical honesty is putting the girl on a pedestal, it's unlikely to work. If your radical honesty is um, taking away her idea that it just happened and making it too contrived and too put on, it's unlikely to work. Point number three. The better your game is, and more particularly the better your inner game is, the more likely radical honesty is to work. That is because you are essentially narrating your frame. Right? I've said for a long time that if you have the right view on life, you can narrate from a high value frame and that will be effective game. Well, what is that? That is essentially radical honesty. Right? But if you're narrating a high value frame, it's likely to work. Narrating a low value frame, it's likely not to work. If you're narrating, you and I are attractive people, it makes sense, we should grab a coffee, that's likely to work. If you're narrating, I don't believe I deserve you, I don't know why you'd even talk to me, unlikely to work particularly well. And as you get more advanced, as you get more reference experience, as your inner game grows and improves, radical honesty is likely to be a better and better answer for you. Point four is in the title. Radical honesty has to be honest. You cannot fake radical honesty. It will come off as creepy, it will come off as incongruent, it will come off as weird. There are a lot of parts of game where you can fake it till you make it, but radical honesty is not one of those. You can't be fake honest. You can't be lying about being honest. It doesn't work. People will see right through it, and the genuineness and the power of it will be lost. And finally, point five, radical honesty is not everything. Right? As we saw with this student who did some radical honesty moves that worked and some that didn't work, if you use it universally, it's not going to be a robust model of game. That said, if you game without using it, you are missing one useful tool. And that's what it is. It's a tool or a technique just like anything else. Push-pull is a tool or a technique. A certain type of opener is a tool or a technique. False time constraint is a tool or a technique. Radical honesty, similarly, is one more technique you can add to your game arsenal. And if you use it right, your game arsenal and your game will be much better as a result.